Today's video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X, your Mac as good as new. Hey, it's Chris, and welcome to my 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro review. I have been a MacBook Pro user for several years. Now, you guys may not remember this, but back when Daily Tech used to just be a blog and I was just getting into video stuff, I actually started editing 4K content on a MacBook Air. So when I jumped from that onto a MacBook Pro, it was just like a night and day difference. I have loved the MacBook Pro lineup ever since, and currently I'm using a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I really wanted to get my hands on the 13 inch this year and check it out, put it through its paces, put it through my workflow and workload and see what I thought. Now, more or less, this 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro is basically a spec bump. We don't have a new screen, we don't have new speakers, there's not a new mic setup or different bezels or anything like that. And you know, the camera on the front, it's still what they call a potato cam. So it's not like when the 16 inch MacBook Pro recently came out and the hardware really saw a big change. What we do have that's new this year, aside from the internals, is a new keyboard. This is the last laptop to finally get that new Magic Keyboard, and so the Butterfly Keyboard is gone from Apple's lineup. But the story here is, if you need a lot of power in a small package, so a powerhouse that doesn't take up too much room, that still remains very portable, then is this 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro good? And by the way, I'll have a video coming out soon comparing this 13-inch MacBook Pro to the 16-inch MacBook Pro more in depth and to the 12.9-inch iPad Pro. So make sure you're subscribed. Now, with this 13-inch MacBook Pro, it is ever so slightly heavier than the last model. I shouldn't even mention it. You're not even gonna notice it. I just wanna point it out because there was a reason that that butterfly keyboard existed. They shaved it down with hardly any key travel, made it so minimal to make the whole thing thinner and lighter, the whole keyboard. So now we've got the Magic Keyboard, it's a little bit thicker. You have more key travel, one millimeter, which is great, by the way. Now, you probably expect me to be talking a lot about that keyboard, and I will, let's get to that. But first, I just wanna be a little bit more practical. So. One of the tests that I did was export a 4K clip that was five minutes long out of Final Cut Pro. So I exported it to H.264, which I frequently do. This is my real workflow. And when it's done, I stick it in compressor and convert it to 4K HEVC before I upload it to YouTube. Now, exporting that 4K five minute clip took actually just under four minutes. So personally, I am very happy with that performance. By the way, if you're wondering what the specs are of my review model, I'll just list those down in the description so we don't have to bog down too much here in the video. So I'll get more into it when I get into an actual comparison between the 16 inch and the 13 inch, but let me just say, I got the 16 inch because I wanted the most power that I could get in laptop form from Apple. So I maxed that thing out. But what I'm seeing is that, yeah, could I have lived with this? Was Is it totally, usable and livable for what I do? Yes. Is it probably just a little bit slower? Yeah. Of course there's a trade-off for being more portable than the 16-inch MacBook Pro. But I think that's a trade-off a lot of people are going to want to make. When I was looking at the 16-inch and the 13-inch side-by-side, I was noticing, yeah, the bezels are just a little bit chunkier, which makes this look a little bit older than the 16-inch. So something else that I did was edit a batch of photos in Lightroom, and this thing handled it like a champ. And I'll also just say, when it's time to be done with work and you wanna do a little relaxing, get some entertainment in, I tried out several Apple Arcade titles on here too, and those ran great. So a lot of people are gonna tell you, hey, the MacBook Pro, it's not a gaming computer. And to be honest, for traditional hardcore gaming, it's really not. But Apple Arcade's getting better and better all the time. I sat down with IA Writer, which is my favorite writing app, and I could just write on here all day long. Speaking of great Mac apps, the sponsor of today's video is Clean My Mac X, which will help your Mac perform as good as new and which is now available in the Mac App Store, proof that it's legit and safe to download. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one solution that replaces dozens of optimization tools to make your Mac run cleaner, faster, and safer. Without touching any of your essential system files, Clean My Mac X reveals hidden junk, it scans your Mac for malware, and it helps you free up space and manage your storage in the most convenient way possible. 
So top up your Mac's performance by downloading Clean My Mac X from the App Store today and use it on all devices with the same Apple ID using the link down in the description. All right, so let's talk about the keyboard, right? It's the Magic Keyboard. We have a Magic Keyboard on lots of Apple laptops and devices now. And I'll say, I really do like typing on here. Now, I used to think that the Butterfly Keyboard wasn't all that bad. When it was out and I had it, then I was like, hey, I kind of like it, right? Because it was the latest thing, whatever. But now I'm typing on an old computer that we have that has the butterfly and I can't stand it anymore because the key travel is so shallow. So this is a major upgrade if you're coming from butterfly land. Not only do the keys actually sound better and press nicer, but the corners are actually a lot more stable than the last iteration of the 13 inch. I guess there's just less of what you would call corner wobble. We do have the inverted T arrow keys. That's nice to see back because it just makes it easier to feel around and not have to look, right, to see where the arrow keys are. So if you're in a spreadsheet or something, that's nice. And the coders out there will be delighted to know that there's a real physical escape key here. You don't get an escape key, physical or digital, on the new iPad Pro Magic Keyboard that's all floaty that just came out, which you can check my review of also if you'd like. So all in all, I think you basically have what almost everyone would call a perfect keyboard situation on this 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now there's two versions that you can get, right? There's a base entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro and then you can upgrade that. On the base model, you still get a touch bar, which is cool. You get touch ID and all of that, which I like. It's nice when you're unlocking the computer. It's nice when you're making a payment. So touch ID being there, that's really great. You have a lot of touch bar haters out there in the world. I don't mind it. I think it could be better somehow. Uh, maybe if it tilted up so you could actually see it better, but I don't hate it and I use it all the time and it's fine. It doesn't bother me. A lot of people just don't understand the touch bar. They don't know all the ins and outs and how to use it. Like they're tapping volume up and volume down. They don't realize you can just tap and hold and slide up or slide down. It's great, it's customizable. I like it. On the base entry level model, you also only get two Thunderbolt ports. If you upgrade, you can get up to four, which honestly, I wish that you could go beyond that. I would love to see six, but that doesn't exist even on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So keep dreaming, I guess. The base entry level model though, it only has Intel's eighth gen processors. So people are always like, how do I know which one to get? Should I upgrade? Because on the more expensive model, you can upgrade and get the Intel Iris Plus graphics, which is nice. And here's what I would say. It comes down to whether or not, and think about this, time is money to you. Like, if you need every ounce of time that you can get, then maybe you wanna upgrade. If it doesn't matter so much, if you're the kind of person who's working on a project and you can just export it overnight, it doesn't matter, it's not time sensitive, you don't have to get it to that client right away as soon as possible, then yeah, you probably don't need it. And here's the thing, if you're a pro and you need that extra power, you probably know. More storage, more RAM at the base level, that's nice to see this year. And how much storage should you get? Well, here's the thing, if you are a pro person, you're gonna be doing a lot of editing and stuff, do you want to have to have an external drive? Do you wanna rely on that? I don't. If I'm gonna be traveling, if I'm gonna be on a plane, in a hotel, in the coffee shop somewhere, I would rather be able to edit a full project without an external drive on a fast SSD. So I upgrade my storage as much as I can, whenever, whether it's an iPad or a MacBook. So that's something to keep in mind. But if you don't mind relying on external storage, which could be a little bit slower too, then you maybe don't have to. So do I recommend this thing? Absolutely. And I'll just say this, if it was down to like a Dell and this, I would get this any day. Uh, there's just so many advantages to being in the Mac ecosystem. AirDrop is great. I can shoot something on my iPhone, AirDrop it over, get it into Final Cut Pro and get editing immediately. Same with photos. iCloud Sync is great. The look is just classic. It looks so good. You can't fault it for that. And just Apple's Pro software stack in general, Logic just got a huge update. That's gonna be amazing here. You can use it with Sidecar, with your iPad. That's great, I love Final Cut Pro. I'm just not an Adobe Premiere kind of a person. But I guess what I'm trying to tell you is there's nothing that would keep me from recommending this device to you. So, would I rather have this 13-inch MacBook Pro or would I rather have the new 12.9-inch iPad Pro 
with the Magic Keyboard, or would I rather have my 16-inch MacBook Pro? Those are all questions I'm gonna answer in future videos soon on the channel. So like I said, make sure you're subscribed. If you have any questions, leave those down below and either I or the community can answer those for you, hopefully. And don't forget, I'm at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. If you haven't yet, then you should come join the party, the Daily Tech After Party. That is the podcast, comes out every Friday. We talk about Daily Tech, we talk about Apple. You don't wanna miss that. And also check out applehype.com. That is a site that I personally curate and pick three things that you need to care about in the Apple ecosystem, in Apple world, an app, an accessory, and one news headline that you can scan in 15 seconds or less. So check all that stuff out. It's linked up down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video and in the next studio. Later.